YouTube, what's good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over this crazy color transition and a ghosting effect that kind of goes along with it. I'm gonna be using my thermal preset pack that's now available on After Effects. If you've watched some videos before, you've probably seen it for Premiere, but now I just made it available on After Effects because I know a lot of people have been asking for it. So if you're interested in that, I'll have a link below. These two effects and transitions we're going over are really simple to do. I think they look really cool and kind of bring emphasis to certain parts in your video, as well as like some texture just to change it up from like the normal performance scenes, it kind of just like add some B-roll and some difference to your video. If you're new to the channel, what I do is a lot of music video editing tutorials and like breakdowns. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, be sure to subscribe. We're going for 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And like 60 something percent of you guys that watch the video are actually not subscribed. So if everyone went ahead and subscribed, we'd be really close to the goal actually. Also, if you haven't already liked and comment, it really does help push my content to other people that want to see it. it, really supports me as a creator and it's appreciated. If you wanna support me even more as a creator, as well as save yourself some time while editing, you can go over to brindalmata.com. I have a bunch of different presets for After Effects and Premiere, as well as my texture pack that helps you get those paper rip effects and transitions. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, I'll have a link below as well as playlists where you can kind of learn how to use those products. It's really appreciated, obviously not necessary, but it's the best way to support me as a creator, as well as get yourself some high quality digital assets in return. But yeah, that's enough talking for right now. Let's go into After Effects, break down this effect and transition. So now that we're in After Effects, I'm just gonna show you some of the effects I did. So here's a really simple one. It's just rotoscoped out the clock here and then put a thermal preset on it just to bring a little bit of attention to the clock. You can do this with any kind of object, really. You can do it with your subjects, just objects, anything really just to bring attention to it. I think it's a cool way and it's really simple to do. And then I'm also gonna show you this transition sequence as well as like this ghosting crazy color effect. So here's the transition sequence and then there's that the hand with the bag being thrown here. And I think it's cool. It's a good way to bring emphasis to something, kind of have it look a little unique and different. I kind of came up with that effect doing this effect actually. If you guys are interested in this, let me know. I've seen a lot of Instagram editors do it in native. It's like this like static going behind the subject and kind of like liquefying. And I was just playing around and I tossed a preset on. So first off, I'm gonna be showing you this clock effect. It's pretty much the same thing as the ghost effect as well. It's just a really simple version of that. So I'll be going over both. So I'm just gonna go ahead and split my clip up. Basically just find the clip that you want the effect to take place on. For us, it's this clock. And then I'm just gonna go to the rotoscope tool here, double click on your subject or the layer you want, and then just rotoscope out and outline. Depending on how complex your subject is, it might take a little bit more time or a little bit less. That's why I'm showing you on the clock first because the hand and bag is a little bit more time consuming. So I just wanna show you how to rotoscope and then I'm just gonna have a rotoscoped out layer already ready for the tutorial. So first off, you can just go frame by frame. If it ever messes up and goes out too far, you can hold Alt and erase and you can see that kind of erases or if you wanted to add something back in like that, you could just draw in by clicking. And then you can just go frame by frame using the preview tab here or you, if you're confident, you can just click play and it should do a pretty good job, especially on this clock. And then once you're all done with that, go ahead and click freeze. That's gonna lock in your rotoscope as well as mask out the subject. So you're not gonna be able to change the rotoscope anymore unless you unfreeze. And it's also gonna mask out your subject. So you'll see here, once we close out of the layer, you'll only see the clock. So once it's gone through and frozen all the clips, you can go ahead and click close on a layer and you'll see that the subject is just masked out. So for us, the clock is just masked out. And if you wanna change anything, you can change the feather. Sometimes to make the edges a little smoother, you can bump up the feather or the shift edge in negative or positive, depending on how much you messed up. But for us, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and click Control D and then remove the rotoscope from the bottom layer. That way, the top layer is just the clock and the bottom layer is the normal clip. Then I'm gonna to go to my user presets here and navigate to my thermal pack. And then I'm just gonna drag on. For this one, we can do the dark thermal preset. I think it looks really cool and it's just dragging on. And that's pretty much the effect right there. I'm gonna show you how to kind of recreate this. If you don't have the thermal pack, you can go ahead and make something similar. Basically the thermal pack is just designed to save you time when getting these crazy thermal looks. So all you have to do really to get the effect, drag on the curves layer and then just play around with the curves of the red, green, and blue sliders. So basically, if you understand curves, the bottom portion right here is mostly the shadows, the midtones, and then the highlights up here. So basically what that is saying is in certain parts, there is more red in the, for right here, I guess the midtones, and then the, the darker shadows, but not like the absolute blacks. So if you understand curves, it's pretty easy to create looks that you want but it is time consuming. I spent a lot of time going through and making 25 different unique ones, as well as what the preset comes on. It comes with inverts on each side of it. So it actually has, so basically each preset is four in one. So making this in over a hundred different looks, pretty much just drag and drop. So you can see it's four different options with each one. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the default, but sometimes the invert looks cool. It really depends on your footage 
and what preset you choose. So that's how you go ahead and get that look. I think it's a really simple look that like just brings attention to the clock. Maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense right here, uh, for example, but there's definitely cases where you can use it and it would really enhance your footage. So now we're going to the hand. Now that you understand how to rotoscope out your subject or whatever you want to rotoscope. So basically what I did here is rotoscoped out the hand in the bag here, went frame by frame. Uh, I'm not going to show you the process of me doing that because it just takes a lot of time, but you can understand what I did here. Basically just rotoscoped out the hand that froze it and then tossed on a thermal preset. And that looks pretty cool just like that. But I'm gonna show you how to sauce it up a little bit more, have that ghosting look and the flicker and just kind of bring even more attention to it. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is once you apply the thermal preset to the layer, you can go ahead and click Control D on that layer and it's gonna make two of the exact same. So if you go to the bottom layer and go ahead and type in echo and drag that onto your clip, it's not gonna really do anything right off the bat, but you'll be able to understand what it's gonna do in a second. I'm gonna turn the number of echoes up to five and you might get this weird look right now, but it's fine, I'll show you how to fix it. Go to composite and back of, and you still have a weird look. So basically what you're gonna to need to do is keyframe the number of echoes. I'm gonna go ahead and start it at zero. And since we did five echoes, right, we're gonna go five frames to the right. One, two, three, four, five, and then bring it up to five. So it's gonna introduce a new echo every frame. And now you can see it fixes that issue. Basically what it's doing before is bringing frames from the clip before. So if you go ahead and keyframe the echoes like that, it doesn't have that weird effect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to decay and bring that to 0.8. So basically it's gonna lower each echo by 20% opacity each time. So you can see now it's kind of slowly fades out and kind of has this look slowly ghosting look, but it doesn't look exactly right yet. So to kind of blend these clips together, I like using directional blur. So just go into after effects and go to the effects and presets here and drag on directional blur. And depending on which way your subject's kind of moving, I would use this knob. I think most of the motions up and down, we can keyframe it if you want, but I don't think it's really necessary for this one. Most of the motions up and down with the bag throwing and then his hand kind of going up and down. So I just went ahead and brought up the blur length to like something like 20. It really depends on your clip on if you like it at 20 or not. Sometimes you want more, sometimes you want a little bit less. I like it like this personally, so I think it looks really good. And then to bring a little bit more attention to it, I'm gonna add Sapphire Flicker. If you don't have Flicker, you can just keyframe the brightness, like one frame really bright, next frame not, not so much, and just have it random basically. That's basically what Flicker does. And by default, I think Flicker looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna change the amplitude to something like 0.4 maybe, and see what that looks like, just so it's a little bit more apparent of the Flicker. And I like that a lot, actually. So I think that's how I'm gonna leave it. And that's pretty much the effect. You can do this on people, objects, hands, like I did here. Basically anything that's moving, it's not gonna look as good if you don't have something that's moving, because obviously if it's just delaying the echo and it's hand stationary, there's not gonna be much movement and you're not gonna see what's happening. But since there was a lot of movement here, I thought it would look really cool of like the bag tossing to the ground and then his hand moving back. And then next, I'm just gonna show you that transition I did with these photos. If you don't have photos from your video clips and you like where something looks, maybe you say you like this as an image, you can right click, go to time and then freeze frame and it'll just freeze frame it and basically turn it into an image. I'm just gonna use the images here because they're available for us, but that's what you can do if you don't have images ready. And then I'm just gonna split at the beginning and at the end here. I was holding control shift D just to do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and split the adjustment layer here where it changes the frame each time just so we can have different presets or different sizes of them. You'll see in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and use the same preset that I used on the other ones. You can play around with whatever ones you think look good. I think dark thermal looks really good here. And since I did it on an adjustment layer, we can play with the crop a little bit. Maybe if you wanted it just to line up where, where the photo was, you can have it like this, or you can drag it on this side. I think I'm gonna keep it on the side of the images here. And then I'm just gonna drag it each time. And basically to do this transition, you can just leave a still image for like 10 frames and then just drag the thermal preset onto it. And it's gonna give it this look. And I noticed you can see that it's kind of like moving a little bit. And that's because the actual images in the video here are flickering a little bit. So to get that look, if you don't have, if your images aren't flickering, which I don't know why they would be by default, you can add flicker to them or keyframe the brightness, like I said earlier. If you really wanted to like push the look of the thermal, you can bring the flicker above the thermal preset itself and turn it to something like 0.5. And it's gonna, since it's gonna flicker a lot and change the colors, it's going to actually like almost animate the 
preset itself. So I could just go ahead and copy and paste the Flickr onto all of these and make sure that you're doing it and putting it above if you want it to change the overall look. If you don't want it to change the look and you just want a little bit of Flickr, you can add it on the bottom. And that might be a little too aggressive or whatever, especially because there's already some flickering going on, but that's how you can do it. You can bring it down to like something like 0.2 for here. You can change the speed or whatever. But yeah, I think that's a really simple transition. I always like photo still frames as transitions already. So I think with these like crazy colors on top of them, it just like makes it like pop and have a really cool look. So, so that together with the ghosting effect looks like this. I'm actually a really big fan of how this looks. So yeah, like I said, it's just a really good way of bringing attention to a specific detail in the video. And just, uh, I think it's a pretty cool effect. And then this is a pretty decent transition. Like I said, you can get it using the curves, just going crazy with it and getting these different looks. That's why I created the presets just to save you time. So you don't have to spend the hours that I did going through, making sure that each one looks good and has a kind of a theme or whatever. And it's just nice. You just drag it on, click invert to kind of play around with the looks. See if you like that look better, or this look better whatever. Like I said, there's 25 presets, 100 different looks in total with all the inverts. There's bound to be a bunch that you like. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. If you made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. Thank you very much. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. If you want the thermal pack or any other music video editing asset, I'll have my website linked below, briandelmata.com, where you can purchase these. It's the best way to support me as a creator, as well as save yourself some time with these presets and packs. I'll have them linked below. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.